When we add some food color to water and stir it, you see that the food color mixes very nicely, spreads throughout the water. But now let's add some oil to the water, stir it, stir it hard. And what we find is that, hey, that oil is not mixing throughout the water. It's not spreading throughout the water. So look, in both cases, we mix things, but the two mixtures look very different. And this difference is important in chemistry. So let's talk about them. Before we talk about mixtures, let's quickly recap pure substances. Pure substances can either be elements, which are basically made of one kind of atoms. These are the elements that you find in the periodic table. For example, look, oxygen is made of all oxygen atoms. You have gold, which is all made of gold atoms. Or they can be compounds, where two or more atoms are chemically bonded together in fixed ratios. For example, in water molecules, we always have two hydrogens for every one oxygen. We call these pure substances because, well, they're purely made of the same stuff. This is purely made of oxygen. This is purely made of gold. This is purely made of water molecules. This is purely made of carbon dioxide. So elements and compounds are pure substances. And they have very specific properties like boiling points, melting points, densities, and so on. Now, what do you think happens when we physically combine two pure substances? Like for example, oxygen and carbon dioxide, or let's say we put gold in water. We create mixtures. A mixture is a physical combination of two or more substances in any proportion you want. But wait a second, aren't compounds also mixtures? I mean, here carbon and oxygen are mixed together. Hydrogen and oxygen are mixed together. So shouldn't these be mixtures as well? No, and this used to confuse me a lot, okay? But the key point is mix, you get mixtures when you physically combine two or more substances. And as a result, because these substances have different boiling, melting points and densities, you can physically separate them. For example, I can just pick this coal bar out from water, but in other cases, I can heat them or cool them or spin them or use magnets if, if they have magnetic properties, but all by physical means, I can separate them. But in contrast, Compounds are where atoms are chemically combined. They're chemically bonded together. You cannot separate these atoms by physical processes. So compounds are still pure substances. Now guess what? Even mixtures can have different types. So let's investigate them a little bit more. Here we have mixed oxygen gas and carbon dioxide gases. When, when you do that, the different substances get evenly distributed at a molecular level. And as a result, the composition stays pretty much the same throughout. You get a uniform composition throughout. And you cannot see any distinct parts or phases with the naked eye. And that's exactly what happened when we added food color to our water. Again, the food color uniformly distributed itself throughout the water at a molecular level. And as a result, see, you cannot distinguish where the food color is and where the water is, right? We call such mixtures homogeneous mixtures. So homogeneous mixtures are the one where you cannot distinguish between the different substances that are mixed. In contrast, look at the gold inside water. I can clearly see where the gold is and where the water is. I can see the boundary over here nicely. And the same thing happens when we add oil in water. I can clearly see there's oil here and there's water over there. Here, look, the substance is not evenly distributed throughout. There is non-uniform distribution. There's a lot of oil here and hardly anything over here. There's a lot of gold here and nothing over here. Such mixtures where we can easily make out the different substances that are mixed together, which we can see with our naked eye, we call them heterogeneous mixtures. All right, let's take some examples now. Why don't you pause the video, go through each one of them and classify them as either homogeneous mixtures or heterogeneous mixtures. Pause and try. All right, let's look at salads first. I can clearly see the different options that are mixed together. I can clearly see their boundaries. So this is a heterogeneous mixture. Okay, what about butter caramel? Well, can we see distinctly where the butter is and where the caramel is? No, they're nicely uniformly distributed. So this is a homogeneous mixture. We can clearly see the seashells and the cement separately. So it is heterogeneous mixture. This is sand and water. We can see the sand here and water over here. I can clearly see the boundary. So it's again, heterogeneous mixture. What about ink? Well, over here, there's a uniform distribution. I cannot see any boundaries, any distinctions. This is a uniformly distributed mixture. So this is a homogeneous mixture. What about brass? Hmm, this could be tricky. What exactly is brass? Well, brass is a combination mostly of copper and zinc. But look, 
it is mixed uniformly. I cannot see the distinction between copper and zinc. And so this is again a homogeneous mixture. Finally, what about copper? Hmm, well, this is a trick question because copper is an element. It's not a mixture at all. It's a pure substance. So in summary, when you combine two or more substances, physically, we call them mixtures. If the substances are mixed uniformly at a molecular level, so you cannot distinctly see the different parts, we call them homogeneous mixtures. In contrast, if the different components are not uniformly distributed and you can distinctly see them, you might even see their boundaries, we call them heterogeneous mixtures.